G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series and welcome to another Tech Top Tip video. Now, here today I'm going to be talking about something really important in regards to your four-wheel drive vehicle. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to own a Land Rover, not even a Land Cruiser. This goes for any off-road going vehicle out there today, particularly the more modern variants out there. What I'm going to be talking about is actually fitting a long range tank and one of the things that you really need to be mindful of when you actually do it. And this comes back down to your fuel sender unit. Is it actually going to give you a correct reading or not? The tank's changed but the sender unit hasn't. Well to find out this and more you know exactly what to do. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a brew or something slightly stronger but most importantly stay tuned. Okay, so you fitted your long range fuel tank to your new vehicle, your old vehicle, your unicycle or whatever you have. But the one thing you haven't changed, as I've already mentioned, is the sender unit. Now, I'm not criticising anyone in this video, it's just an observation, and I'm certainly not criticising the people that work incredibly hard to fit all these accessories. You know, they do it to all kinds of vehicles all day every day and that's a really tough job to do but this is more of an observation for the people who are looking at actually de designing some of these accessories you know there's always room for improvement and there's no problem in um, you know just voicing a few concerns so what happens as I said you get a new fuel tank but the sender unit remains the same and what a lot of manuals actually stipulate is when you get the sender unit you actually get this arm and you actually bend it and you bend it in such a way to try and increase the overall distance from the top of the unit to the bottom of the float here and why is that important well the float itself obviously as the name suggests floats so as it fills up with fuel it goes up to the top of the tank as you slowly burn the fuel out of the tank in the motor hopefully it travels all the way down to the would-be bottom of the tank. Not a problem at all. The problem is by bending this arm though, you've changed the actual arc or the movement that it actually goes on. And that's why with a lot of vehicles that have long range tanks in them, they'll sit on, for example, like full for ever in a day. And then all of a sudden you look out the window, contemplate life, look back at it and it's already on empty and the fuel light's on and everything's gone wrong and that's the key reason. Why does it happen? Well it's very simple. Sender unit hasn't changed but the geometry of your tank has. The tank might be now longer which isn't so much a problem but most long range tanks are a lot higher or deeper than their standard counterparts. Now this can also create problems too. Back to the sender unit. In your standard tank when the arm goes all the way down to here, if I bend it straight again, luckily I don't need to use this again, it goes all the way down to the bottom, that's getting pretty close to the bottom of your tank. There might be a little bit of fuel sloshing around, there might be you know, a quarter of an inch underneath that, 10 mil, but that's it. Now if you've got a deeper tank, you might have you know, 3 inches below it. And that might be another 20 litres, 30 litres, 40 litres, who knows? Because no one does know. Because the sender unit's down there telling you it's empty, but you're playing a game of Russian roulette because you don't know how much fuel's in the tank. Now, some of you will say, well, Jeff, that's a bit silly. You can just set the odometer on your speedo. And that's a really good idea. I certainly do that all the time. But it doesn't reflect the rate in which you're burning the fuel. If you're driving in deep sand, 
you're going to be travelling slower at higher RPMs and therefore the overall uh, miles per gallon or the you know, litres per, per hundred kilometres is going to be infinitely more than you just cruising on a nice flat highway somewhere. So it really can make it quite difficult. The best thing to do in order to mitigate this problem is not to throw your sender unit, unit away, but this is something that I've actually come across in a lot of old Land Rover fuel tanks over the years. This one here is for a 10 gallon fuel tank, and Land Rover made a long range fuel tank called 16 gallon. And basically, what people do is they cut it here, and then they get some, you know, I guess whatever you want to call it, wire or tubing, and basically they braise an additional length on, get the cut end, or where it's been cut, and just lengthen the overall length of the arm, and then you get a perfect movement from top to bottom with an accurate reading. How easy is that? So if you are looking at fitting a long range fuel tank, I'd really suggest you you know, to look in and do this. Obviously practice a little bit on your brazing or soldering technique before you give it a go. And obviously look at the overall design of your sender unit too because, you know, the, a lot of modern cars, their sender units don't even look like this anymore. But by doing that, as I said, you can get an accurate reading, you're not going to get caught out, and you can just enjoy your journey. And I will be looking at modifying one of these sender units in a following uh, servicing your 4x4 episode. So if you want to see that, then you know what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below. Click on that notification button too. But if you found this video interesting and informative, then please do support not me, but Seriously Series over on Patreon by clicking on the Patreon icon on the end screen and also jump down into the content section down below. You'll find the Patreon link. You'll also find a link to our online store where we're selling all kinds and all manner of things. Pint glasses, hoodies, even um, phone covers and more. So you'll find something that will suit you and suit your workshop there. But anyway, I've got some Land Rovers to fix, so I'll catch you in the next one. See you then.